Well, summer is well and truly upon us here in the Northern Hemisphere, and that means that I'm less involved with my day job than I am at other times of the year, which of course means I have more time to devote to telling stories to you all. And that means, of course, as well, that I can do some longer stories, including the epic six-parter that I have for you this evening. Now, the more observant among you will notice that I've already done part one in another anthology video, but I've gone ahead and re-recorded it for this one, just because, well, it felt right to do it that way. So, this one kind of meanders a bit from one subject to the other, and wherever we begin, we definitely do not end up there at the end of the story, just to let you know. And I think you all deserve, anyway, to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. Penelope lifted her finger from the doorbell, and wrapped both hands behind her back. The ebony wood door in a golden frame, which most likely cost more than her monthly salary, opened. She was greeted by the wide smile of a black-haired middle-aged woman in a skin-tight black dress. Shiny silver pearls and earrings complemented her attire. Her husband, wearing a beige suit and a big golden watch, stood one step behind her. Peeking from the interior, a twelve-year-old girl in a green sweater waved, smiling wide, revealing braces. The woman put her hand on the side of Penelope's shoulder and slightly tilted her head. Oh, I'm so grateful to you, young miss. I sincerely hope this wasn't an inconvenience for you. She smiled with her mouth closed and eyebrows pulled together. Oh, not at all. I love babysitting, especially your little girl, Miss Mobley. She's so well-mannered. Penelope... Hands still behind her back and feet glued together, kept her calm smile. You know what to do. We'll be back at two o'clock. Gabriel, our limousine is waiting. Mrs. Mobley grabbed her husband by the wrist and led him out into the clean, white corridor. Gabriel turned his head and waved at his daughter, who eagerly waved back. Enjoy your anniversary dinner. Penelope turned to the girl and hugged her. She was a short woman and stood a little taller than the little girl. Oh, this is so awesome. I haven't seen you in ages, Pen. She hugged her tightly and welcomed her in. No trace of dust or filth could be seen in the two-story apartment. The walls were white and covered with simplistic paintings. All pieces of furniture were a combination of the same ebony wood as the door and dark blue leather. The stairs leading to the second floor had gold ornamented railing. <laughs> it's only been three months, Nina. Penelope flattened the back of her red summer dress and sat on a long couch, facing the widescreen TV. So, how's school? She threw her small backpack to the side. That's always the first question you ask me. Nina frowned and crossed her hands. Boring as always. Nothing cool happens in private school. She turned her head aside. Penelope smiled, gently put her hand on Nina's chin, and turned her head to face hers. Oh, the stories I tell of my school days, they aren't cool in any way. Don't go looking for trouble. With a burst of energy, Nina jumped on the couch and wrapped her arms around her knees. Oh, since you brought it up, can you tell me another awesome story? She hid her evil smile behind her knees. Your standards for awesome set really low. Your folks should really give you access to the internet. Penelope had tried to talk them into it before, but always failed. Okay, I'll tell you what. Action, romance, or horror? She raised one eyebrow and smiled. The little girl opened her mouth. Ah. Uh, she shut it and closed her eyes. Horror! Nina yelled. Eyes now wide open. Ooh, horror. You usually choose action. Penelope began to think. Hmm, I ever tell you about... Her voice gradually became quieter. The bogeyman, she whispered. Pen, don't feed me childish fairy tales, Nina frowned. Boogeyman is only a nickname. Penelope's voice shifted back to normal, the nickname of a very scary man. 
she got her quiet, low-pitched narrator voice back. The way she said those words got Nina's attention. This was back when I was thirteen. One day a friend ran up to me, all frightened, and said a man had been following her from a distance. This man wore a black hoodie and was almost seven feet tall. Nina hadn't blinked once since Penelope started her story. Next day, another girl at school said he followed her, but this time he was even closer. A third girl came the other day, and this time he was only thirty feet away. Penelope had been slowly moving her head towards Nina, and now whispered inches from her ear. I thought they were messing around with me, but that night, when I walked home, I could feel I wasn't alone. I looked back and saw that exact same man in the distance. I turned and quickened my pace. In a minute, I glanced back again, and he was thirty feet away. I went behind a corner and bolted. Mere seconds later, I heard him running too. I turned around as I ran and saw this huge man in full sprint, hand out to catch me, and then... Penelope took a deep breath and prepared to jump scare the little girl. The lights in the apartment turned off. The room was pitch black. Nina shrieked and stumbled off the couch. Penelope, calmly but curiously, looked around. Hmm. This isn't the kind of apartment building to have power outages. She found Nina's shoulder in the darkness and pulled her closer. Chill out. This is a power outage. They happen from time to time. She put her hand on the girl's cheek. Power will be back any moment. A solid minute passed and Penelope sighed. The light from her phone illuminated the entire room. She could now see Nina's panicked face. Penelope couldn't remember the first time this had happened to her, but when she thought about it, an outage could be horrifying, especially the first time you experience it. The safety light provides disappears in a flash, and we are reminded how dark the night truly is, without our technology to guard us. Oh, right, I remember, we learned about this at school. Nina calmed down. I'll go talk with one of the neighbours. As she got up, the girl grabbed her by the hand. Mum doesn't let me have a phone. I can't light up the room. Any candles? We have some, but they're special or some crap. Mum would kill me if I lit them. Okay, but don't tell your old folks I let you out of the apartment. Penelope held Nina's hand and walked out. Unlike the apartment, where the light illuminated the entire room, the corridor stretched out into darkness. Penelope pocketed her copy of the key and closed the door. They carefully approached the nearest door and rang the bell. A man in a bathrobe, hair covered in shampoo, with a candle in his left hand, opened. Ah, oh, don't you just hate these... He stopped mid-sentence when seeing the little girl. Oh, uh, don't you just hate these outages? These apartments aren't cheap. I'd expect better maintenance. We were hoping you, or someone on this floor, knew what was going on. Penelope tried to be calm. Her phone shut off. It caught her off guard as she clearly remembered charging it before coming here. Now that the light from it was gone, the door to their apartment was swallowed by darkness. Both sides of the corridor were pitch black. Oh, uh, you wouldn't happen to have an extra flashlight to lend. Penelope smiled. Sadly, no. I can't seem to turn them on. He looked at her phone, and then back to her. Hmm. Same thing with mine. He moved aside and revealed his living room, lit up by candles. Could you lend us a candle? She could see her breath as she said those words. A chill went through her spine and she could feel Nina's grip tighten. The entire corridor had become colder. Everyone's breath was now visible. All three of them ran into the apartment. The man shut the door and pulled his candle closer to his chest. They lost control over their bodies for a moment, something on a primal level, 
forced them to flee towards the warmth of the candles. The man's home was almost identical to Nina's, but had lit candles on all the tables. The rooms were entirely lit and lacked any dark corners. I... I wasn't the only one who felt that, right? The man took deep breath. Definitely not, sir. Nina slowly loosened the hug around Penelope's waist as she calmed down. Someone must have left the entrance door open. Penelope wasn't the bravest of people, but she would always stand up if no one else did. <laughs> I'm sorry we jumped into your apartment. And don't worry, you can stay here till the power comes back on. The man looked nervous. And, uh, I'm scared of the dark. I could use someone to protect me. He looked down at Nina and smiled. Oh, I should change. He picked some shampoo off his head. You two feel like home. And the man walked up the stairs. Just as they were going to sit, Penelope's head snapped towards the door. She put her finger to Nina's mouth and attempted to listen carefully. There it was again. A very subtle sound from down the corridor. She let go of Nina and silently walked up to the door. Now she could hear it better. Footsteps. Whoever was walking outside tried to be quiet. Penelope signaled Nina to sit down. She could define the sound better once it was closer. Naked human feet accompanied by three clicks, one after the other. It came closer and closer, until she could hear it only a few feet away on the other side. The footsteps stopped in front of the door. Something sharp slowly scraped against it. Penelope's heart was beating rapidly. Even though it was dark on the other side, she looked through the peephole. As expected, only darkness welcomed her gaze, but that same primal fear reappeared. I got this real fun board game we can play. The man broke the silence as he walked down the stairs with a colourful box in his hands. Penelope's head instinctively rotated towards him. The lights came back on. Penelope's phone screen shone through her pocket. The man's TV turned on and filled the room with screaming and yelling from some comedy movie he'd been watching. Penelope quickly looked back through the peephole and saw only an empty corridor. Yay, 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 the light's back, Nina cheered. Penelope walked to her with a smile. See, told you everything would be cool. Yeah, the man looked at his box with disappointment. The light is back. He slowly put it on a table and walked up to them. You two have a good night. He put his hand on the doorknob. Um, the lights might go out again. And who'll be here to protect you? Nina smiled. Hand still on the knob, he looked at her in surprise, with a slightly open mouth. Penelope looked at the time on her phone, and then back at the girl. Two hours till bedtime, Pen. Nina tilted her head. Um, okay, if it's cool with a man, we can stay, but only for an hour. The three stayed up another three hours, laughing at some horrible action movie, eating chips and playing the same board game. Sometimes, the darkest moments can lead to the brightest of days. Penelope's eyes and nose peeped out from under the thick, parrot-patterned blanket, which covered most of her body. Every now and then, her hand would stick out, change the channel, and quickly return under the warm cloth. The only light in the dark room came from the TV. It flashed and tinted Penelope in different colours. Both her legs were pulled up on the brown ruffled armchair, blanket tucked in under them. 
Staying up late and randomly browsing channels when having work in the morning was a bad habit she'd reinforced for years. Unlike Penelope, her roommate Grace would be sound asleep in bed hours ago, but this night she was away with her brother on some trip. Penelope had never slept in an apartment alone. She'd always be with family or friends. The knowledge of her friends sleeping in the other room would bring her a kind of closure. Penelope repeated to herself, This isn't anything new. She'd been alone in a room hundreds of times, yet there was a constant feeling of anxiety and loneliness. The TV offered the much-needed distraction that would make the night go by easier. This evening, we're cooking chicken fajitas. Some fat chef stood next to a table with ingredients. Penelope stopped on a cooking show. Unlike the movies up to now, this guy looked at the camera and talked to the viewer. It felt like she had company. As the show progressed, the chef constantly talked. Oh, there's no such thing as too much salt. He was in the middle of a sentence when Penelope muted the TV. Yes, there is, she said aloud, pretending to be there with him. She turned the sound back on for a few seconds before muting it again to simulate a conversation. It protects you from the bad things, the chef said before being silenced by the remote. Penelope smiled. <laughs> what kind of bad things? In the end of her question, she turned the sound back on for a moment. The kind that visit you in the night. Up to now, the chef had cut lettuce and talked at the same time. But when he said those words, he locked eyes with the camera. Penelope's blanket fell to the floor as she quickly unmuted the TV. The secret is this. The chef proceeded to explain some boring chicken recipe. He talked in his calm demeanor. Penelope realized her mouth was wide open from the shock. The loneliness was getting to her head. A knock on the window made her drop the remote. She recoiled and looked at its direction. A stray grey cat licked its paw from the outside. The remote had hit the mute button and the TV was silent. Strays hadn't bothered her in the past. The cat didn't pay Penelope any attention. She picked up the remote and turned the sound back. Something in the remote must have broken on the impact with the floor. The sound turned on and off for a moment. Don't look away, the chef said, before being muted. Penelope examined the remote for a few seconds, before making a connection between the cat and chef. She quickly looked over to the stray. It was trying to push its small paws in between a crack in the cheap window. The moment she turned, the cat stopped and looked away. Penelope, eyes locked on the cat, pressed the unmute button, which once again turned the sound on for a few seconds. Light stops them. It sounded like the chef was trying to fit as many words as possible in the short interval. Penelope rushed to the switch on the wall, and turned the room lights on. The cat jumped back and disappeared into the darkness. She gave out a sigh of relief and sat down. The TV remote was all messed up, and going to an electronic shop tomorrow would eat up a lot of her precious procrastination time. She sighed and looked for any unread messages on her phone. No mail, no one online to chat with, no interesting gossip. Maybe downloading one of those time sync games her friends love would help her feel less lonely. A thud came from the bedroom. The apartment had three rooms and a toilet. The only ones with windows were the one with the TV and the bedroom. Penelope slammed the door open and turned the lights on. At first glance, the window wasn't broken, but once examined closer, she could see a small hole in the frame. The woman yelled and jumped to the side when something rubbed against her foot. Thoughts of unlocking Grace's safe under the bed went through her mind. The same cat from before purred and rubbed its body against her leg. 
She sighed. Oh, you're just a cat. Penelope smiled and picked the string up. And you want a warm place to sleep at? She let out a small giggle. When she thought about it, being scared of a little cat is stupid. She stuffed the hole with a towel and returned to the living room. Sorry, Kitty, but you have to go. Penelope walked over to the window, at which point she saw the cat for the first time. The moment her hands touched the window, the TV audio turned on on its own. The chef could say a few words before being muted again. They can't open windows. Penelope quickly put her hand away from the window. What made her heart skip a beat was that, for a mere second, the cat flinched, almost making an angry frown. She dropped it and took a few steps back. The stray purred and licked its paw. Eyes still on the cat, she picked up the remote and pressed the unmute button. The cooking show with the chef had ended and random voices from commercials filled the room. A loud crash out in the corridor made her jump. She turned the TV off and walked to the door. Please, not this again, Penelope whispered to herself. Ear against the door, she heard it. Unlike a week ago when the power outage had occurred, this creature wasn't silent. It moaned and hobbled towards her. It left last time. It should leave again, she reassured herself. Once close enough, it slammed its body against the door, knocking Penelope down. She heard it drag itself to the floor. I love you, a man's voice came from the other side. I, I always have. He was definitely drunk. Please, let me in. He pathetically begged. I see the lights are on, Grace. It sounded like he was attempting to stand up, but fell back to the floor. He must be one of her roommate's friends. Penelope stood up and cautiously walked over to the door. Grace isn't home, she quickly replied. Nobody answered. Blood leaked from under the door. Oh, he must have hit himself on the impact. Penelope quickly turned around as she remembered the cat. It calmly laid in a ball on her armchair. Was it really just a stray that wanted a warm place for the night? She picked up a small stool and unlocked the door. The man could have been heavily injured. A generic-looking guy with jeans and a red t-shirt laid on the wooden floor. Penelope could see the wound on his head. Since he looked defenseless, she put the stool down and dragged him in the apartment. The wound wasn't serious. What took him out must have been the alcohol. She took a bandage from one of the drawers, pulled his black messy hair apart and applied it to his head. Only now she noticed the cat hissing at the man, ears flat and hair standing up on its hunched back. Penelope drew duct tape from a drawer and tied the man's hands to the radiator. The cat calmed down, which made her calm down as well. She sat on the armchair, the stray in her lap. The woman ran her hand down the animal's fur. That chef's matching sentences must have been a coincidence. This cat is nothing more than an animal searching for shelter. The only creature outside was a drunk idiot. Penelope smiled. Ah, everything has an explanation. She looked at the cat, which answered with a purr. The night was stressful, and sitting back on the chair with a fuzzy friend to pet was relaxing. Hmm. I'll name you Mr. Dark. Penelope smiled at the cat. You gave me quite the scare in the dark after all. My, oh, my head. The man slowly woke up. Took you long enough. Penelope looked down at him. You have any idea how much you freak me out? He shook his head and looked around the apartment. Where am I? He noticed the tape around his hands when attempting to stand up. Who are you? 
His voice turned slightly nervous. Chill out. I'm Grace's roommate, and you're in our apartment. Penelope pulled her phone out and looked at the man. What's your name? I'm Michael. You aren't calling the cops, are you? The way he said it, combined with his current state, made him look really pathetic. Oh, I'm sorry. You can't just bang on people's doors at night. Halfway through dialing, the phone, along with the light and the TV, turned off. Darkness filled the room. Penelope leaned down and drew a long candle and lighter from under the armchair. She quickly lit it and headed towards the bedroom. You afraid of the dark? Michael laughed. It's just a power outage. Penelope finished placing and lighting the fifth candle in the room. She prepared well for another outage. Ear against the door, she stood perfectly still. Once again, as expected. The familiar, naked human steps came in from down the corridor. Penelope and Mr. Dark hid behind her armchair, candle in one hand. What's going on? the man asked, slightly confused. Shh! Penelope waved at him to shut up. While she was scared, her experience from the last outage left her feeling braver. All of their breaths were now visible. Something in her stomach twisted and turned. The familiar terror from deep inside emerged once again. She hugged Mr. Dark and pulled a candle closer to them. Michael was visibly feeling it as well. Paranoia and fear filled his body. In a panic, he thrashed around, trying to get free. The locked doorknob rotated as something attempted to get in. The man panicked and tried to wiggle his hands out of the tape. Cracks formed on the door as whatever stood on the other side slammed into it. Michael let out a yell. The man pulled hard and freed one arm. Oh, yes! Penelope pushed her armchair against the door. The second hit would have knocked the door open if it wasn't for her barricade. Splinters and pieces of wood flew out and covered the floor. Michael used one to cut the tape off. Help! Penelope yelled. What sounded like hyena laughter came from outside. Michael leapt to her side and pushed the chair with all of his strength. A third slam created more cracks. Pieces of the armchair bent over as a long, hairy, clawed arm burst through the door. It rapidly waved around, trying to grab anything in reach. Penelope got up and sprinted to the bedroom. Falling flat on her chest, she ignored the pain and dragged out a small safe from under the bed. A fourth slam sounded from the other room, followed by Michael's shouts. The safe popped as she finally remembered the combination. Penelope loaded bullets in her roommate's revolver as fast as she could. A fifth slam burst the door open. The revolver clicked, having been loaded with only three bullets. Gun in hand, Penelope kicked the bedroom door open. Pieces of the front door and armchair covered the floor. Michael was being dragged away from the candlelight. Two hairy clawed arms protruded from the darkness. One sunk in his shoulder, the other gripping his hair. It attempted to drag him down the corridor. Penelope aimed her revolver at the darkness, where she assumed her target would be. The light following the first shot illuminated the corridor for a second, revealing the abomination's face. It hissed and loosened its grip. In shock of its face, Penelope took a step back. Attempt after attempt, she couldn't pull the trigger. Her finger was frozen. The creature regained its composure and continued dragging him gun aimed at it. Penelope stood as she watched Michael scream. Shoot it! Shoot! His voice became distant, once completely devoured by the dark. Everything went quiet. Arms still out in an aiming position, Penelope dropped to her knees. 
Her hand loosened, and the revolver fell to the floor. The lights in the room turned on. Penelope walked at speed and didn't look back once. Tiny wheels on her suitcase made the only sound in the dimly lit street. Mr. Dark, the formerly stray cat, followed right behind. Everything up to now was no coincidence. Something had been targeting her for the last week. Why her? She was just a babysitter. Shadows and darkness surrounded the thin stripe of light that is the road. Looking anywhere but the lit ground would risk seeing that thing, stalking her from the shadows. These could have been her last moments of life, and light was what she wanted to see. Headlights, accompanied by a honk, blinded her. She tripped to the side and landed on the pavement. Mr. Dark silently hid behind her. An expensive, crimson convertible parked in the middle of the street. With an energetic thrust, the driver's side door opened. Hen? A voice she hadn't heard since her last birthday filled Penelope with hope. The person facing her wore a blank tank top under her unzipped white jacket. Both women shared the same brunette hair and black eyes, although her friend had hers longer and in a ponytail. The small silver cross around her neck flickered in the night. Sis? Penelope rushed to her feet and hugged her sister, who was almost one head taller. We must get out of here. Her happiness quickly faded, as she remembered what was following her. Slightly confused, her big sister lifted the suitcase with one hand and returned to the car. Drive, Penelope demanded in a serious tone. For the first time in her life, her sister's obsession with speeding seemed helpful. The convertible flew through the small streets and alleys, and in less than a minute found itself on a four-lane, well-lit road. Penelope moved her fingers through Mr. Dark's fur, who laid in a ball on the red leather dash mat and watched the passing lights. Amelia gave her sister a few minutes before asking, So, what's up? Her sister didn't answer for some time. You've always been there for me. Can I tell you something? As long as you don't say this fuzzball is your pet, Mr. Dark's claws came dangerously close to the leather. Penelope giggled. <laughs> I'm keeping him. A smile quickly dropped, though. I've been seeing and hearing things, she quickly said, as if hoping not to be heard. Also, I shot at one. You fired a gun, Amelia said in an excited tone. I'm being serious. The thing got this poor boy... Amelia took her eyes off the road and glanced at her every now and then. Somebody probably slid you something. She clearly had experience. I wasn't on drugs. It happened when I babysat as well. Look, this shit happens to me too. Stress can screw with your brain. You just need a little sleep. Penelope hadn't slept well the entire week. She tried to imagine the monsters, the smash door, the outages, they were all in her head. Yeah, you're right. Of course I'm right. Plus, you don't have any fun. You've got to blow off some steam. Oh, I have fun. Well, I guess you could say sleeping and eating is fun, Amelia grinned. They laughed and told each other stories. As their conversation continued, Penelope's eyelids felt heavy. Her insomnia slowly melted away. In the middle of the conversation, she trailed off and hugged her sister's shoulder. Rays of light woke Penelope. She had a long night of deep, dreamless sleep. The convertible's roof was down, exposing her to the afternoon sun. Sis? She looked around, her vision still blurry. The car was in what seemed to be a private fence parking lot. The dozy woman dragged herself out of the car and examined her surroundings. The city could be seen in the distance. A bigger, almost full parking area stretched to all sides. 
People were going in and out of the giant mall that she knew existed, but had never visited. Her bright yellow summer dress was now stained and dirty. A small sticky note fell from her chest. Not quite awake, she picked it up and squinted her eyes. The beautiful handwriting of her sister was instantly recognisable. Hey, Pen. Had to take care of some work. I've seen you've been having a hard time in this city. Come with me to the coast and we can live together. You have a day to make your decision. Take the bus and go back to the city. Or stay in the mall and wait for me to pick you up. A smiley face with a wink followed. Penelope scratched her back and made her way out of the fenced area. A guard at the exit let out a laugh. <laughs> Party last night went bad. Summer ended and the slight autumn breeze kept rubbing it in Penelope's face. She put a few coins in a vending machine for a snack and sat on a bench near the mall's parking lot small carton of apple juice in her hand. These were the last few warm weeks that she could wear lighter clothing. A tall and skinny blonde man in a leather jacket walked across the parking lot. Hand out, he waved at her, only using his fingers. Once close enough, Penelope could see his creepy expression. Head tilted forward, he made a half smile, revealing some of his teeth. What up, Penny? He sat on top of the bench and positioned his muddy running shoes on the seat next to her. Mr. Dark peeked from behind her leg. I'm good. What about you, Leo? Not wanting to be rude, Penelope smiled. He leaned his head forward in an awkward manner. Oh, I'm always 100%. Thanks for asking. She couldn't tell if he was being sincere or condescending. It's been two years, hasn't it? Penelope got tired of twisting her neck to face him and looked forward. Sure has. Leo poked her head. How have you been doing? More slightly uncomfortable, Penelope stayed seated. Oh, I picked up a babysitting job. You? Oh, I formed a rock band with the boys back from school. What happened with you becoming an artist? Penelope stood quiet for a few seconds. <sighs> Haven't gotten round to it. She quietly answered. Expected things to be different when school ended. Yeah, me too. Not going to that shit hole is even better than I expected. A slight smile creeped on her face. Hey, I gotta fly. Take this. He passed a piece of paper. <laughs> VIP seats for my concert. You're playing in a retirement home. Penelope smirked. Leo smiled and got up. <laughs> the crowd loves us. He made the same creepy wave and left. Time flies fast. Only two years on from graduation, and she was far from where she wanted to be. Oh, to hell with it, she said aloud. Hours passed as she waited and slowly drank her apple juice. A few minutes had passed since the sunset, and she was alone in the giant parking area. Before paranoia could grab a hold of her, the convertible's engine became audible. It drove out of the private area and parked in front of her. Amelia leaned out of the window with a grin. Hop in. This time, Mr. Dark curled up on Penelope's lap. The car sped off into the night. Now on the highway, she was far over the speed limit, overtaking each vehicle in her way. Sis, please slow down. Penelope had her nails sunk into the red leather seat. The vehicle slowed down. Thanks. In a few minutes they passed a parked police cruiser. Another minute and she got back to speeding. Penelope's heart raced as lights and flashes went past them. The sound of the roof slowly retracting fueled her anxiety. Why are you doing this? She yelled, trying to be louder than the wind. Amelia had her eyes locked on the road. Get used to it. Her voice was distant due to all the surrounding sound. Mr. Dark clung to Penelope's dress with his claws. Her vision blurred and she felt sick. Time was slowing down in her head. Each sound echoed through her ears. The car brake shrieked as they pulled over to the side. Along with her cat, she instantly ran out of the car and vomited. Get it all out, Pen. 
her sister talked from the car. That puke on the ground, that's your old and boring life. She retrieved a bottle and shot glass from the glove box. Come here for a taste of the new one. You drink when you drive? Penelope yelled. It's for you. Amelia poured a glass. And we've got to talk about that yelling. Mr. Dark and her little sister got back in the car. You know what? I chose this. She grabbed the shot glass and took a sip. Amelia leaned the glass bottom with her finger, forcing Penelope to drink it in one gulp. <laughs> That's how you take a shot. Ugh, what is this? It burns. Penelope cringed. Her sister put the alcohol back in the glove box. Feeling any better? The car's roof went back up. <sighs> Not really. Look, the fuzzball can stay. First animal to survive my highway driving. Mr. Dark hid himself under the seats. Now, in the speed limit, the convertible got back on the highway. To her surprise, Penelope began to feel better. Better than before, as if a burden had fallen from her shoulders. I'm never going back to that city. She smiled. I wonder how the children on the coast are. Oh, Pen, you didn't think you'd be babysitting, did you? Penelope burped. You want me to be a coach lifer like you? Look, it's called a life coach. No, I have a friend who'd love to hire you. He's a painter. A painter? A spark of excitement flashed in Penelope's voice, as in a real artist. No, you'll be painting walls in a construction site. Her sister answered with sarcasm. Of course a real artist. I haven't painted in years. Well, I remember how talented you are. With a bit of training and his help, you'll be a goddess. Reignited dreams filled Penelope's head. With a smile on her face, she watched the road. Can we put up some music? Which station? Um, something jazzy. Amelia turned the radio on which played heavy metal for a second, and she browsed through, till reaching a jazz music station, and Mr. Dark purred. A few hours passed before she slowed down. The lights of a big gas station with a few smaller buildings nearby came into view. She filled the gas tank and parked on the side. Two men were changing the only other cars, apparently flat tyre. Mm, I could use a bite. Hope they have those little chicken nuggets. Amelia got out of the car. Penelope's hunger finally caught up with her. She hadn't had a real meal in almost a day. Unless Mr. Dark ate trash off the ground, he had to be starving as well. Oh, I really do have to change this dress. Penelope went through a suitcase. <laughs> Definitely right about that. She pulled out a folded red summer dress. Really? You don't have anything else? Nope. What do you have against my dresses? Well, nothing. I just personally prefer variety. They found their way to the empty public restroom where she changed. Mr. Dark spotted some cockroaches and ran off. The sisters entered one of the smaller buildings, which had a fast food sign on it. A fat lady played games on her phone behind the counter. What's up? Amelia greeted her. Without moving her eyes, she slid a menu onto the counter. The women picked a table and looked through their options. Oh, they have sushi here. Penelope gave her sister a serious look. A friend ate sushi at a gas station once. Diarrhea for a week, she whispered. Hmm. Now that I think about it. Oh, they have those chicken nuggets you mentioned. I'll get them too. The fat lady was close enough to hear them. Chicken nuggets, two portions, Amelia ordered. The lady took her time to get up, retrieve a pack from the cooler, and empty it into the microwave. She brought them two plates of heated chicken nuggets. Enjoy! And she sat back behind the counter. Halfway through their conversation about cartoons they'd watched when they were young, Amelia got up. Did I lock the car? She said to herself. <laughs> back in a second. She exited the restaurant. Penelope felt relaxed. 
She'd almost cleaned her plate when the doors opened. To her surprise, the two men from before entered. They instantly found their way to her table. Their entire demeanour was full of hostility. She gave a panicked glance at the window. Her sister wasn't anywhere in sight. Hey there, madam. You're looking kind of lonely. One of them put his arm around her shoulder. Actually, my sister is here, Penelope quickly replied. Our boyfriend bikers are also coming soon. She added, the men traded evil smiles with each other. One scratched his beard. Hmm, why do I get the feeling you're lying to me? And I don't think your sister will be returning. Penelope's eyes widened. What did you do to her? Her fear slowly changed to anger. Hmm, feisty, are we? She's well, but she did ask you to join her in our car. Penelope knocked the chair down as she jumped back. Call the police, she yelled at the fat lady. I haven't seen anything. The woman watched the two men, slightly scared herself. She looked back at her phone, which to her surprise had turned off. Look, we'll make it easy for you. Follow us to our car. The other man laughed. I prefer we don't make it easy. And with those words, his breath was visible. He rubbed his shoulders and looked at his friend with a confused face. The room had gone cold. Penelope felt a new tingling sensation, as if her body was moving but staying still at the same time. One of the men let out a muted yell as his body rapidly spasmed for a second. His friend took a few steps back. Penelope looked down at the floor only to see her shadow twist and elongate in an impossible direction. Its arm formed a spike, which penetrated the man's own shadow. It pulled the spike out and swung it across his neck, slicing the other shadow's head off. While the man's body was intact, he collapsed. The room went dark. Penelope stood still for what felt like an eternity. Accompanied by the door opening, all the lights turned on. Amelia entered. The two men, along with the fat lady, laid on the ground. What the... She looked at her terrified sister. Pen? She jumped over the bodies and hugged her. What's going on? Are you alright? Amelia lifted her over one shoulder and exited the building, heading directly towards the car. The moonless sky lacked any stars. The night was dark. Penelope watched her sister drive down the highway. Do you think I'm crazy? It took a few seconds for a response. Of course not. I killed those people. Looked like they were sleeping to me. Amelia comforted her. And you said they attacked you. Well, whatever happened to them was deserved. I can't get that man's face out of my head. Penelope hugged herself and leaned back on the seat. I... I... She most definitely enjoyed seeing him die. But if she finished the sentence, her sister would definitely think she was crazy. Look, Amelia interrupted. Some things in life are unexplainable. Whatever happened back there, you couldn't control it. It just wasn't your fault. Her words were calming and would always put Penelope's mind at ease. Mr. Dark rubbed his body against the seat, reminding them that he existed. We're halfway there. I've got to get some sleep. There's this motel I stopped by on my way to your city. Penelope lifted her cat and played with his paws. I never asked. Why were you coming to visit me? Her big sister glanced at her. I wanted to see if you'd moved to the coast. We don't talk enough. I missed you. Well, things worked out pretty well, didn't they? Penelope smiled. <laughs> they sure did. An hour till sunrise, and they reached the highway motel. I don't understand. Why are we in different rooms? Penelope unlocked one of the many identical doors in the long corridor. 
You have to sleep alone, dummy. Besides, I'm in the neighboring room. Both women were visibly tired. The younger sister shut the door and found herself in a small room. Without much thought, she collapsed on the bed. We are all over the world. Different languages, clothing, beliefs, social structures, mindsets, and we all live separate lives. Yet there are things that connect us. Death is something everyone can understand, something everyone fears. It's hard to accept our mortality, the idea of completely disappearing. We try to leave an imprint, things others will remember us by, things that let us stay in this world, far beyond death. Children, reputation, accomplishments, construction. When the day comes, we want to be able to tell ourselves, people won't forget me. I will live on in their memories. I accomplished something. My life had meaning. But why? Why does it matter? You're dead, one way or another. You can't breathe or sleep. You'll never see the sky and ocean again. You don't exist. But it's okay, because you no longer want all of that. You're dead, right? Why do you want to live anyways? It ends the same way. There is no meaning in existing. Darkness. I was surrounded by complete darkness. Why wasn't I scared? It was rather calm here. Where is here? My body, I couldn't feel it. Did I have a body at all? Who was I? I was doing something, walking. I walked somewhere. I wasn't alone. But all that didn't matter, did it? Trying to remember felt bad, so I just relaxed. All of it went away. I was in the darkness again, and it was better there. Oh, maybe I should just stay here just a little bit longer. My voice sounded very distant. How much time had passed? I felt like I kept falling asleep and reawakening. The moments of being awake became shorter and shorter. From what I could tell, my final awake moment came. It was peaceful. Reaction. What was a reaction? A word? No, no. A feeling. Cold. Yes. Cold. I know how it a body. I floated in the darkness, and my voice came from my mouth. Something, something around my neck. Hostile pain. It wanted to hurt me. A hand around my neck. Someone's hand. How dare they? Who do they think they are to try and take the only thing I have right now? My life. Penelope's eyes opened. Loud knocking echoed through her ears. Now awake and feeling well rested, she realized it was all a dream. The woman crawled out from underneath the bed. Had she fallen off and rolled under? Wake up, Ben. Time to go. Amelia's voice came from the corridor. Come on, sis. It hasn't even been an hour. Penelope watched the night through the window. Oh, yes, it has. You slept through the entire day. She quickly opened the door. The entire day. Sorry, I didn't want to wake you up. You were quite tired. Still slightly confused, Penelope joined her sister in the convertible where Mr. Dark awaited. I got you a snack from the vending machine. Amelia pointed at the pack of chips on the seat. I promise the food will be better on the coast. They were on the highway again. I had this... Bizarre dream. That's so. What you do in it? It's hard to explain. I think I was someone else, and I was dying. Well, that sounds depressing. We really need to do something positive. Do you remember how to swim? Oh, I've forgotten. Only time I swam was with you, when we were little. I'll teach you. You're going to love it. Amelia looked at her sister. Close your eyes. Penelope giggled. <laughs> okay. When was the last time you were happy? I'm... I'm not sure. Back when I was nine, I think. Why were you happy? 
Amelia put her right hand on her sister's shoulder. I'm not sure. Eyes still shut, Penelope bit her bottom lip. I didn't have real problems. I was just a kid. Yes, you were a kid. But people of all ages have real problems. The difference is, you didn't let them get you. What do you mean, sis? I don't know. You tell me. Amelia turned on the radio and put her hand back on the steering wheel. Jazz music deafened the traffic, and Penelope lost herself in thought. Time passed. Ah, oh, home sweet home, Amelia proudly announced, snapping her sister back to reality. The city of Santa Basia greeted them with its many colourful lights. Penelope's old city was monotone, with many identical buildings and little landmarks, while the very visage of her new home was difficult to take in all at once. From her current location, she could see multiple buildings and docks covering the shoreline and giant bay. Penelope watched the wide variety of architecture the city was famous for, and as they got close, they entered a specific district. Most of the buildings were old and constructed out of grey bricks with flat roofs. The highest ones were only three stories, and usually had protruding steel pipes, balconies, window bars, and many other elements. Newly built modern buildings, squeezed in between the older ones, could be found here and there. This part of the city appeared to be badly lit. It lacked street lamps, glowing signs, open shops, or restaurants. Why does this place look so... dead? Penelope watched through the side window. Don't worry, you'll only be here for a bit, until I get you a fancy apartment in the better neighbourhood. Amelia smiled before dialing her phone. It's Amelia. The friend I told you about's arrived. Be at your place in a minute. Without waiting for an answer, she hung up. Who did you call? Your new roommate. Wait, I won't be staying with you? Oh, I got a call back at the motel. I've got an urgent job. Remember, confidence can unlock powers you've never dreamt of having. The convertible stopped by one of the many brick buildings. The small street was dark. A hand knocked on the window, startling Penelope. Her sister put the roof down and waved. The silhouette of a man waved back. Ah, this must be her. Feeling uncomfortable, Penelope and her cat exited the car, which immediately drove off. Later, Pen, her sister yelled, disappearing behind a corner. We'd better get going. Follow me, the man grunted, while lifting her suitcase with both hands. I'm also a cat person, he looked at Mr. Dark. Penelope smiled and followed him into the building. Finally, on the third floor, he dropped the suitcase to the floor. Once the door was unlocked, he dragged it in. They found themselves in a small, three-room apartment. Oh, you didn't tell me your name. The man wiped sweat from his forehead. Now in a lit room, she could see him better. He was tall, chubby, and clean-shaven. I'm Nicholas. His big blue sweater came off as strange as the weather was warm. And uh, that's where you'll be sleeping. He pointed at an old sofa against the wall. Penelope smiled and shook his hand. Thanks for the hospitality. Uh, Want to watch some TV? She looked at the small TV on a drawer in the corner. It's the middle of the night. I'm going to sleep. He returned to the bedroom and shut the door. Penelope looked at the exposed light bulb hanging from the ceiling. Please, don't turn off, she whispered. After plugging her phone into charge... She walked out to the small balcony. Colourful lights and tall buildings could be seen in the distance. I'm definitely going to the beach. Penelope talked to Mr. Dark. You'll probably want to stay home. You guys hate water, right? He jumped onto the balcony railing, their eyes locked. I never noticed you had blue eyes. The woman sat down, leaving her legs to hang out of the balcony. 
Oh, I don't feel sleepy at all. Want to hear a song? Mr. Dark jumped up onto her lap and curled up into a ball. Penelope quietly sang and hummed, patiently waiting for the sunrise. The first beams of light blinded Penelope. She covered her eyes and recoiled. The sun was completely visible, as there were few clouds on the coast. Hope you got enough sleep. We have work. Nicholas called from inside. Work? Wait. Are you that artist? Artist? What are you talking about? He seemed confused. Oh, I'm referring to the warehouse. Penelope left the balcony. I can't. I'm moving today. Nicholas wore a cheap suit and a beret. Moving? Your sister made a deal. I let you crash here. In return, you work at my warehouse. After a heated conversation, Penelope realized he was telling the truth. She didn't have enough money to get back to her old city. <sighs> this must be some test to show I'm confident. She mumbled to herself and decided to follow Nicholas. Together they exited the building and found themselves on the street. It wasn't the most populated neighborhood, but there were people passing by. Penelope trusted her sister, and therefore she trusted Nicholas. A few blocks down, they reached a big warehouse, tightly fitted between the other generic buildings. There was a small man-sized door and a couple of large steel coiling doors, one of which was left open. Penelope saw two workers carrying a large wooden crate into the back of a moving truck. A pile of at least twenty similar crates rested at the side. The two men, now empty-handed, exited, and immediately locked eyes with the woman. They both appeared to be in good physical shape, and wore grey overalls. One was shorter, and had an unlit cigarette behind his ear. The other stood a foot taller. Who the fuck is that? The short one had a high-pitched, raspy voice. Your new colleague. Nicholas led her to a small room with five lockers. That one's yours. Hurry up and change. He closed the door and waited outside. Penelope found the same grey overalls inside. Once she put them over her dress, it was apparent they were a bit too large. She exited with a smile. <laughs> How do I look? The short man laughed. Yeah, like a snotty brat pretending to be an adult. He looked at his boss. What's she going to do? Label boxes? Nicholas looked at Penelope. See that pile of containers? Help my boys get them in the truck. All of you can call it a day once you finish. The two men laughed and smirked. And you two? His eyes shifted to them. This is Amelia's sister. And with those words, he left. Penelope's new colleague's faces shifted to those of curiosity. <sighs> Initiation time. For the first time, she heard the tall man's low pitch voice. His friend leaned on the wall and smiled. This is going to be good. Both sounded a lot friendlier now. Before Penelope could say anything, the tall man punched her in the face, sending her a few steps back. My name is Ben. For a few seconds, her vision was blurry and blood dripped from her broken nose. Last time she'd fought was over a pencil back in high school. Ben laughed and put his hands behind his back. Show me what you got. Penelope clenched her fists. All of her veins were bulged and pulsating. Mimicking him as much as she could, she attacked. The feeling of her fists flattening his clothes and making impact was a new one to her. Ben stumbled a few feet back and coughed. Before he could compose himself, Penelope had landed a second hit in the chin. His head twisted to the side. Seeing him in that state was intoxicating. My name is Pen, and I can... Ben grappled the short woman by the waist and lifted her. With a slight spin, he hurled her into the wall. 
Nice to meet you, Pen. Ben spat some blood out and sat on the ground. I'm Samuel. The short man realigned her nose with a painful snap. A few minutes of recovering then passed. So, are we going to work? I want to have time to go to the beach. Penelope touched her nose. The man laughed. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. They walked over to the pile. I heard you guys can lift cars. Show us what you got. Ben said with a smile. Penelope couldn't tell if he was joking. All of the heavy containers had handles on each side, intended to be carried by at least two people. Pen, pen, pen. The men quietly cheered. Pen, pen, pen. They cheered louder. She grinned and grabbed the sides of the crate. As she tensed her muscles, the feeling from before returned. Her veins were bulging. Teeth clenched, she let out a yell. She was holding the crate a few inches above the ground. Her colleagues cheered her on with each step. Penelope reached the truck and dropped the crate to the ground. One leg in the truck, she closed her eyes. Her entire life, someone had always pushed her around. She was never the best at anything. Never got what she wanted. She was never strong enough to chase her dreams. So Penelope shouted, lifting the crate above her waist. She entered the back of the truck and placed it next to the two other identical ones. Ben and Samuel yelled and lifted their fists. With a new power surging through her veins, Penelope jumped out of the truck, her shouts of victory echoing through the warehouse. In a few hours, they'd finished their work. Damn, that was fast. I hope you stay here for a while, Pen. Ben rolled down the truck door. They removed their overalls and sat, leaning against the wall. Samuel lit his cigarette. Which mud you betting on tonight? Golden Fang. That dude is alpha as hell. Penelope lifted an eyebrow. What are you on about? Oh, right. You're new in town. We're going to a dogfight tonight, Ben answered. Penelope giggled. Oh, you mean those dog shows where puppies compete for who is the fluffiest? Ben laughed. Oh, I'm stealing that one. You've never been to a dogfight? Samuel sounded excited. A dogfight is where you get a bunch of dogs, starve them and beat them, then let the mutts tear each other apart in the pit, he explained enthusiastically. Oh, you should come with us. Defenseless animals forced to fight each other. Do you really enjoy that? It's a sport, you know, like football. Coaches always torture their team to make them stronger. Mutts there get to be champions. Most of them would have died or starved anyways, Ben added. Penelope got up and walked away. The moment she left the warehouse's shadow, a sharp pain went through her skin. Panic quickly replaced confusion. Something, on a primal level, forced her to leap back into the shadows. She thought about it for a moment, and then walked back to her new friends. Um, sure, I'll come, but I don't think I'll fit in. Mmm, Samuel examined her dress. My sister could hook you up with something more, um, appropriate. He got up to his feet. I'm getting the car. The sun was long gone when Samuel's rusty car parked on the side of a street. The group exited and began walking. Penelope's borrowed grey jeans and brown leather jacket were surprisingly comfortable. Her friends had similar jeans and black muscle shirts. It's just a block away. Ben let them. Why didn't we park there? A bunch of sketchy vehicles fall in one place. Well, that attracts eyes. They stopped in front of another generic brick building. Penelope couldn't see anything special, beside a street name sign. Everything here looks the same. How can you tell them apart? Oh, it's the little things. Ben entered and walked down the corridor. He casually opened a wooden apartment door. Inside, there was a second door, this time metal. 
Here for the show, he knocked. They could hear a barricade being removed. Green eyes with irregularly small pupils sized the group up. The man facing them towered over Ben. Who and how much? His quiet whisper didn't match the intimidating appearance. Silver coat, 115. Samuel gave the bouncer a stack of folded dollars. Without writing anything down, the bouncer took them and nodded. Ben did the same. Golden Fang, 70. He put his arm around Penelope to show that they were together. The interior was an empty apartment, with a big hole in the floor from which multiple people could be heard. Penelope ignored the ladder and dropped down the ten-foot fall, landing on her feet with a thud. They were in the corner of the building's basement. The original entrance was flooded with old furniture and rubble. Ripped-out planks in the middle of the floor revealed a deep pit. Chest-high, chain-link fences prevented the currently calm crowd from falling down. Crates and large pipes, where the people further from the pit sat, formed a poor imitation of bleachers. Two doors, opposite of each other, could be seen. Light bulbs, which hung from cables, cast sickish orange light. Over twenty people were present. The group got comfortable on a line of large crates. Penelope remembered how she would become anxious in a room with two people, let alone a crowd this size. Thinking clearly and being calm in these situations was new to her. Ten or so minutes passed when the lights dimmed, leaving only the ones in the centre. Speakers must have been installed all around the basement. A female voice spoke from all directions. Ladies and gentlemen of Santa Basia, are you ready for a spectacular night? The crowd, along with Ben and Samuel, cheered. Are you ready for chaos? The crowd got louder. One of the side doors opened. Two men pushed a large cage towards the pit. On the left, we have the demon himself. They opened a small gate on the chain link fence and lowered it with ropes. The beast who never washes his teeth. The cage faced the other side of the pit. Golden! Fang! The woman yelled. The pit bull slowly got to its feet. It stood completely still and quiet. The muscular dog was shaved, showcasing multiple scars and what appeared to be a tattoo of chains around its neck. Its right ear was completely missing. Parts of his lip were torn off, revealing yellow, crooked teeth. The dog calmly waited. The noises ranged from cheering and clapping to booing and whistling. On the right, the second door opened. The savage who loves attention. Two men pushed a similar cage and lowered it down the same way. He enjoys walks in the park and tearing out hearts. A little cub. Unlike Golden Fang, this dog was barking, growling, and bashing its body against the cage. The grey pit bull's face was gruesomely disfigured from previous fights. Bloody bandages covered its front paws and neck. Even the most chaotic dogs Penelope had seen didn't come close to these tortured animals. To think that those dogs could have turned out like these monsters if they hadn't been raised by loving owners. With a metallic snap, both cages opened. The dogs instantly charged and crashed into each other. She could hear them tearing into each other's flesh from her seat. Their roars and shrieks deafened the crowd. Penelope's eyes shifted to the side in order to avoid this horrific show. In a few painful minutes, a prolonged whimper sounded and it all stopped. Penelope looked back and saw a little cub biting Golden Fang's lifeless body. Some of the people cheered. Others let out anger-filled yells. The bouncer from before vaulted over the fence and landed next to the dogs. Little cub bit and barked as the man lifted him off the ground. His deadpan stare didn't shift. He hurled the dog back into his cage. The door clicked 
and the two men from before used the ropes to pull it back up. The bouncer threw the dead one in its cage afterwards, and with him on top, they were pulled up. The pit was empty once again. What a warm-up! Are you ready for round two? The voice continued. This had to stop. As the second pair of dogs was being brought out, Penelope noticed the man in front had his phone sticking out of his back pocket. Her friends, along with everyone else, had their eyes locked on the pit. She slowly slid the phone out. Penelope smiled at Ben and Samuel. This is boring. I'm going home. After making her way to the exit, as quietly as possible, a barely audible due to the crowd, voice answered the call. 911, what's your emergency? Penelope quickly told the police about the dogfight and the street it was on and left the phone on a nearby crate. Even with inhuman strength, she had a hard time removing the barricade. Oh, some lessons must be learned the hard way. She stood in the corridor. A big, cold hand grabbed her arm. You forgot your phone, the large bouncer whispered. Mind if you get your hands off me? Penelope turned round. He slowly released her arm. Hey, snitches get stitches. The police are on the way. I'd call it a night if I was you. Penelope heard loud movement from the basement. They knew. Before she could react, the bouncer's fist came crashing into her chest. She felt her back bash the front doors open as she flew out into the night. One of the street lamps illuminated her heavily wounded body. The bouncer exited the building, that deadpan stare still unchanged. His strike was multiple times stronger than Ben's. To her surprise, she successfully got back to her feet. Penelope spat blood and clenched her teeth as the pain going through her entire ribcage slowly faded away. Witnessing that, the man stopped. What are you? His breath was visible. Penelope's shadow wiggled and twisted. Elongating at his direction, its arms merged into a spine. It swung the blade through the neck of the bouncer's shadow. He collapsed to one knee and coughed out blood. Oh, you're one of those. Without wasting any time, he drew a high-caliber revolver. Penelope's shadow retracted. Oh, there's more to you as well. Each streetlight went out, and she disappeared. The man dragged himself to the brick wall, pointing his gun at the darkness. Too scared to show yourself. He attempted to sound intimidating. The sirens could be heard in the distance. The door slammed open, and a big part of the audience from the dogfight ran out. People struggled to find their way in the dark. They tripped over and pushed each other. A fist collided with his wrist, sending the revolver flying. Oh, screw this. He bolted towards the neighboring block with working light. For a mere moment, the muzzle flash illuminated Penelope, aiming the high-caliber revolver directly at the man's head. His lifeless body fell to the ground. The streetlights turned on, just in time for the police's arrival. From a neighboring rooftop, Penelope and Mr. Dark casually watched police officers leading cuffed people out of the building. Well, you might not be the bravest person, but would you stand up if no one else did? So in my introductions, I always try and think of a way to sort of, uh, you know, 
kind of tease something about the story so that you get a bit of a feeling for what's going to happen without actually giving too much away. And as you can probably guess, I had absolutely no idea about how to do that for tonight's story. That went all over the place. Uh, weird and wonderful in many, many different ways as far as I'm concerned. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, thoughts, feelings, comments in the uh, comment section below the video. Do my best to join in the chatter as much as I can. And I will of course be back again with you on Wednesday with another story. Not quite sure what yet, but definitely will be with you. And I know you're all going to join me again, aren't you? Of course you are. But until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay? <laughs>